G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and welcome to lesson 8 of my Learn Dynamo series. So today we're going to be dealing with family types and instances in Dynamo. Uh, on previous lessons we've looked at list and data management, um, we just touched on how to uh, manage data in reference families, but today we're looking at the families themselves. Uh, we've also looked at data types and then a, a brief introduction to the course. Um, I suggest that you go back and watch all these videos if you haven't already, uh, just to be up to speed with some of the techniques we're going to use today. So previously we looked at family data, um, but we're looking about creating families now and uh, placing families. So in definition, Dynamo refers to family types and instances in the same way as Revit. Um, so when you say family type, it's a, it's a family type and an instance is a placement of that type. Um, you can also refer to them as elements as well. So usually most of the element nodes will work the same way as family instance nodes in a majority of scenarios. So we'll go straight to Dynamo. Um, and today's session really just uh, is trying to highlight the ways you can work with family types and data. And then there'll be a few practical applications and some examples in uh, the, the video after this one. So we'll just jump into Dynamo. So we're working with the Autodesk sample project. And we're just going to go through some of the really important nodes in order to work with family types and families. So this is where you can see that families and family types is an important separation in Dynamo. So a family is the overall family itself. Um, in this case, for example, a deciduous tree, but the type is actually the type of that family. So you can see that the family is at the front and the type is after that separated by a semicolon. So you can see here, if I just run my script, you'll see that this particular family will have multiple types, but of those types, this, this one is just a type on its own. You can always use all elements of family types to collect these elements. Um, in a similar way, you can select all elements of category. It's a similar sort of filter to that that we looked at in the last session. Um, and family types is a good way to collect all of those. You could say all, all elements of families of types and then collect them as well to combine those nodes. And you can also go the other way. So I can say of this family type, what is the source family? It's important to process between these when you're trying to set particular parameters. Um, for example, if you're trying to set the level type, um, you would need to get the family type of the level. Um, we're going to move on now to family types by name. So you can collect data, uh, not necessarily having to use the types themselves. You can always just search for strings, um, which can be quite helpful when you've got a particular family that you know should be this, a certain name. Um, and then you don't have to go and search for it in the model definitions of all the types. So in this case, you can see I've mixed a family that I know based on a drop down, but then I've said, I know that one of the types is honey locust uh, 25 foot. Um, in this case, you can feed in name and family, um, but in this one here, you can actually just feed in the name and the type. And what will come out is actually a, a element. So it will have an ID. Um, so that can be a good way to get a family type to start off a formula in Dynamo or a function in Dynamo. Um, and then from there, you could go with uh, family instances by family types. So you can see here, I've used that node to collect all instances of this particular type um, without even needing to use any drop downs or search for any family names beyond just a few strings that I know should always be a certain condition. So that's really helpful. Um, I use that one quite a lot when I'm working with families. Um, you can also see that we can do family type and family and type by name. So I can collect families by name. So you can see that I end up with an element and likewise I can collect a type by name. Uh, be mindful that sometimes with type by name, you may end up with more than one that you collect, depending on what the type names are in your project. So if you have like a chair and a table, and both of their type names are typical, uh, you may end up collecting both of those elements by doing the type name of typical. So just be mindful of that. Um, and obviously you can process these back again into names as well from the family. So you can get those back as strings. So you can work in both directions. Um, we'll look at level types very briefly. So levels uh, have a node that is a dropdown. Um, if you haven't already clued on, a majority of the nodes are coming from Revit. Um, and most of them are coming from elements and then their respective category. A lot of them are coming from family, family instance and family type. Uh, but some categories such as level, floor, uh, walls, roof, room. They have their own respective subcategories. As you can see, it's a huge list. So we won't actually dig through here to find these nodes, but I'm rest assured that unless I tell you otherwise, all of these nodes are contained in the default Dynamo build. Uh, but anyway, back to where we were. So we've got our level types, and this should always source all the levels out of your project. You can also get the elevation and name of that level from there as well. 
the name as a string and the elevation as a double or a number. Uh, you've also got parameters of each level. So you can see in this case, there's a lot of information that we can get out of this. You can see here we've got family, family and type. Um, so we can see how we could work with family types. Um, and as you can probably guess, we can actually do set parameter and get parameter like we did with previous families. I'll show that in an example shortly because um, we're also going to look at, in our next session, we're going to look at these these sets of nodes because um, they're quite important to understand. So these are, these are basically geometry creation nodes. So these nodes let you create floors, roofs, and walls um, from scratch. Essentially, all you need is curves or outlines uh, for each one respectively. And you can generate uh, a building uh, with very little information using Dynamo. But this deserves its own session, so we'll show that in the next tutorial. Um, keep in mind that Springs, which is a custom package, has a really interesting node as well called Element Sketch Collector, which actually lets you feed in something such as a floor, and you can actually convert all the boundaries of that element into curves or model curves, um, which lets you then process that data further in a script. So it's a really helpful node when you're working with floors, um, walls, etc. But we'll move on from that and look at that in the next tutorial. So we also have system families. Um, so we've got floor types, wall types, and roof types, and they all work on a drop-down basis as well. So they source all the active uh, types available in the project. Um, keep in mind that roof types is actually from a package called Rhythm. By default, Revit doesn't have it. And the interesting thing about roof types is it doesn't actually really work properly. So what you need to do when you use the roof types node, which I've discovered, is that you need to actually feed in roof type name and then feed that into roof type by name to actually get the roof type, um, which is quite strange if you ask me, that this isn't the same as this, uh, but it seems like something in here isn't quite working. Uh, these other ones you should usually be able to feed straight through, so you could, have, you could ignore these two nodes if you don't need them for floors and walls. Um, but in this case, you can just see how you can process different types of data through. So you can take the, the type and then you can get its name or you can start with its name and get its type from the name. So lots of ways to work with data there as well. And we've built an example here because I'm just searching for a wall type that is called one hour or one HR, which I assume probably means one hour fire edit. Um, but it's interesting that if I actually get that wall from the project, um, it doesn't have a fire editing field which is quite strange. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do a set parameter by name. So I'll unfreeze this and you'll remember this node from our last, our last session, which lets you set values for parameters. Um, but you remember last session, we only worked with instance parameters. So you can actually use the same thing for type parameters of types as well. So in this case, we're going to set the field fire rating to one HR. I might just double check what type of data that that parameter is just before I set it to make sure it's text. There's a chance it may not be text. I'll just double check. Fire rating. Just call it test. Okay, it looks like it's text, so it should accept that input. So with this unfrozen, let's run this script. And ideally, what that should have done is went to fire rating. And there you go, you can see that we can also set type parameters. So that's a really easy way to set up types in your model. Um, you can create a lot of dummy types and then populate all the data in Excel and then push it through Dynamo, for example. We'll just freeze that for now. So good to be mindful of. You can also get structural framing and column types as well um, out of the box rather than having to deal with uh, more complicated ways of retrieving those elements. Uh, probably quite helpful for structural engineers um, if you're watching. Um, but a really useful pair of nodes that I use quite a lot to be aware of is in the clockwork package. And these are all families of category and all family types of category. So ideally you just feed in current document, toggle true out of false, pick a category that you want to work with, let's say furniture. Um, and obviously furniture isn't available as a drop down like it is up here. And when you run this, you should ideally, there you go, you should ideally get all the families of that category and then all the respective types of those as well. So a really helpful, helpful node. Um, we could also obviously do generic models um, and then toggle. And there you go. We can see we've also got the families, but also all the types as well. So a really interesting way to deal with um, categories without having to rely on out of the box nodes. 
Um, an interesting one from here is family properties. So we'll just get an element that has a host because one of my one of my nodes here actually checks the host of an element. And we'll just go and get, uh, let's get this window, for example. And we'll just rerun that script. So there's some helpful nodes here. One is to get host of an element, which can be good when you're working with doors. Say you want to check all your doors in fire rated walls are also fire rated. You could get the fire rating of the wall of each door and then check if it matches with the fire rated doors. Really helpful node for that purpose. Um, you can also check the orientation that the element is facing, uh, basically from uh, rabbit north, um, I think in a clockwise, no, anti-clockwise direction, I think that is. Um, which can be quite helpful when you're trying to get elements to face a particular direction. You can also get the location of an element, so the point that it's located at. Um, but it's interesting to note that this node is really the same as element get location in function. Because uh, if, if I feed these both through, turn them into strings and see if they're the same, you'll see they are. So um, I haven't found a use yet where this is more important than this. So um, have a play with it, see if you can figure it out, and feel free to let me know if you if you figure it out. Um, so we're almost at the end here, but a really interesting node um, to play with is family type by geometry. It's a little bit of a strange node in how it works. Um, so essentially, this will build a family um, out of geometry in your model. So let's say, for example, we just select our railing geometry using select model element. So I'm basically telling this node to get all the geometry of the element, um, make it a solid and union it all together. So join it into one and feed this through. And I want to basically name this sample, make its category generic models. Um, I've linked up the generic model family template to use and also set the material to default um, at the moment. So it, it's a strange node how it works. Um, but as you can expect, if I run this, it should essentially create a family of my Revit geometry, which is, which is very interesting, actually. There's probably a lot of applications uh, for this node that I haven't really thought about yet. If I open that family, uh, there you are. It's very strange, but it creates this, uh, I think it makes it as an SAT import. So you can't actually do a lot to it. You can set material. Um, you can set subcategory, but you can't really edit the geometry too much. But there's probably a lot of interesting applications such as converting massing objects that I haven't experimented with yet. Uh, but an interesting node to be aware of. And the last set of nodes I think that we're going to look at is family creation. Um, again, this is probably one that really warrants its own demonstration. So there's going to be a separate session after this one where we look at how you can create families in a multitude of ways. But you can see here a lot of creation methods. So you can create a family by coordinate, by face, uh, family instance by face with the option, I think, to flip the, flip the direction of the family and then also just by point. Uh, the most useful one that I find is by point and level. But it's really useful to note that if you create a family uh, using Dynamo, it doesn't un necessarily understand that its work plane is the level. Um, I'm still trying to find out how to actually let it realize that its work plane is the level you're trying to set it to. But it seems at the moment that it doesn't. So in the next session, you'll sort of see that behavior. Um, whether it's a limitation, I'm not sure, but it is a bit strange. Um, but you can create a family in a point at a level. Uh, which is quite helpful um, and also set the rotation of a family as well. So we'll look at these two in another sample uh, in our next session. Um, but in principle, that's really all the nodes that I use for family creation and types. Um, they're all very useful. Um, and I think the key is always to use the right data types for the right things. So make sure you're feeding through family types as elements um, rather than strings, for example. Always really critical. Um, but that's all for today. So if you need any more help, um, I always recommend the Dynamo Primer and also the Dynamo forums for any specific questions you may have. Thanks for watching today. Uh, the next session we're going to do will cover some demonstrations of what I've shown you today. So some actual practice of these techniques. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you in the next session. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you enjoy what you're seeing, feel free to follow and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks. Take care.